Right, so we're going to move on to part two now of the June 2017 paper, Equilibria Energetics and Elements. So the first question is asking about vanadium. It's really important that you only talk about vanadium. Um, don't talk about any other transition elements. Um, they only want you to talk about vanadium. So show that vanadium is both a D-block element and a transition element. In your answer, include the full electronic configurations of vanadium in its zero and plus two oxidation states. So I've done this for you um, up here. Uh, remember that when you go from vanadium 2 plus to vanadium 3 plus, it's the 4s electrons that get lost first. So the 3d are untouched because you've only lost two electrons to go from vanadium to vanadium 2 plus. So first of all, why is he a D block element? Well, he's a D block element because if you look at vanadium um, zero, so you look at vanadium up here, this one here, uh, you will see that the highest energy sublevel, which is being um, uh, filled, is the D subshell. So that's why he is a D block element, because this is the highest energy level subshell um, that's being filled. Okay, why is he transition element? Well, he will form an iron with a partially filled D subshell, and that's why he is a transition element. Right, so for this one, I need to balance these two half equations. So uh, the easiest one is zinc, so let's do this one. I've gone from zinc to zinc 2 plus, so I obviously need two electrons there. Um, vanadium's uh, slightly more difficult, uh, so let's have a look at this. So I've gone vanadium, vanadium in this oxidation state is going to be plus 5, and this vanadium here is plus 2. So obviously it's going to be um, three electrons that are being added there. Now, if you notice, I've got three oxygens there, so I must form three H2O. Um, now I've got six hydrogens there, so I need a six there. So I now need to add these together. Um, now, if you notice, I'm going to have to ch uh, oh, sorry, multiply that equation by two and that equation by three to make sure I have six electrons on um, both. So let's give that a go. Uh, so I'm going to have 2VO3 minus plus 12H plus plus 3ZN is going to go to 3ZN2 plus plus 2V2 plus plus 6H2O. Right, so uh, platin, uh, uncharged platinum 2 complex. Uh, why does it have no charge? Well, platinum is in the oxidation state of plus 2, and you've got two Cl- ligands, which adds up to minus 2, um, and therefore, overall, uh, plus 2 minus 2 equals 0. Draw labelled diagrams of the two stereoisomers, so you can have an NH3 there, NH3 there, Cl, Cl there, um, or you could have Cl, Cl, NH3, NH3. Uh, this one is a cis, and this is the trans isomer. Um, describe the action of one of the stereoisomers of platinum in the treatment of cancer. Well, it's cis platinum, you'll remember, that binds to the DNA of cancer cells and stops them dividing. I forgot to mention on part two. Um, up here, it says describe the bonding um, involving the platinum with its ligands. Uh, the ligands form dative covalent bonds. Um, they donate their electron pairs to the platinum. Right, so this question is uh, kind of tell me everything you know about cobalt chemistry. Um, I've given the two equations. So first of all, cobalt reacting with hydroxide ions gives you cobalt hydroxide. Um, you need to include the colours. This is a pink solution here, um, cobalt 2 plus, and uh, the hydroxide here is a blue precipitate, and this is, of course, a precipitation reaction. For this one uh, down here, this is the uh, 
cobalt, aqueous cobalt complex uh, reacting with chloride ligands. Um, this here is going to produce a blue solution. And this is an example of a ligand substitution reaction. So it's seven marks, so it's worth a lot. Um, so it is worth learning those uh, equations there um, and um, what they are. So question five, we start off with um, a definition again. Explain the term weak acid. Well, if you notice, both weak and acid are in italics. So I would uh, define weak, meaning it partially dissociates, and acid means it's a proton donor. Uh, write the expression for Ka, well you can see it there, uh, please remember to always use square brackets when you use an equilibrium constants, and the K here is a capital K. Okay, uh, calculate the pH of um, a solution of propanoic acid, and they've given me the concentration there. So this equation is really worth learning. Um, the concentration of H plus for weak acid is the square root of its Ka value times its concentration C. Um, so, so you times Ka by the concentration and then take the square root of that number. So um, they've given me um, quite a lot of information here. They've given me the concentration here and they've given me Ka there. So you just times the two numbers together, take the square root which gives you a 6.09 times 10 to the minus four and then you pop that into the equation for pH which is minus log to the base 10 of the concentration of H plus uh, to give you 3.22. Notice that they've asked it for two decimal places, so don't lose a mark on the um, last hurdle there. Okay, for the next one, you need to go back to your table, really. Um, which is the strongest acid out of ethanoic and propanoic acid? Well, you'll notice that ethanoic acid has got the larger Ka value, and that one is the stronger out of the two. So that means that, that this guy will act as the acid, and propanoic acid will act as the base. So it will give me uh, C2H5COOH2 plus, plus CH3COO minus, like so. So that means that this is acting as, let's call it acid 1, and then its conjugate base is here, so that's base 1. This would be base 2, and therefore this one is acid 2. All right, bizarrely they want another definition. What's a bronsted Lowry base? It's a proton acceptor. Calculate the mass of barium hydroxide that the student would need to weigh on a two decimal place balance to prepare um, 250 centimetres cubed of 0.125 moles per decimeter cube barium hydroxide. So um, you should know this moles is equal to the volume times the concentration over a thousand. So you put your volume in, times it by your concentration, divided by a thousand to give you that number of moles of barium hydroxide that will be in the 250. And then to find a mass, you just take the number of moles times by the MR of barium hydroxide to give you 5.35 grams. Notice that's to two decimal places because they've told me it's a two decimal place balance. And then calculate the pH of a solution of barium hydroxide of concentration 0.125. So the way I would do it is I would work out, well, what will the number of moles of hydroxide ions be? If you look, you've got two hydroxides for every one barium hydroxide. So the concentration of hydroxide ions is two times 0 0.1250 to give you 0.25. You then take the, if you then find the POH, which is the log of that number, to the base 10, um, and change the sign, that gives you 0.6. And then you can find the pH easily is just 14 minus 0.6, and that gives you 13.40. Notice again they want it to two decimal places. Okay, so it wants me to work out if I've still got a buffer here. So the first thing to do is start working out the number of moles of what you've added. So they've told you that for propionaric acid, you've added 200 centimetres cubed of 0.324 moles per cubed. 
So that means you've got 0.0648 moles of propanoic acid that you've added. And for barium hydroxide, which is this guy here, you have got 0.0125. Now for a buffer to work, you need to have um, uh, an excess of propanoic acid left over after you've prepared your barium propanoate. So is that the case? Well, for um, you start with 0 0.0648. How much of that will react? Well, for every one barium hydroxide, you need two propanoic acids. So you've reacted 0 0.025 moles of that. So that means you're left over with 0 0.0398 moles of um, propanoic acid. And you formed, of course, uh, because this is a one-to-one -one reaction, you have formed 0.0125 moles of barium propanoate, and therefore you've both got both barium propanoate and propanoic acid in your solution, and therefore you have made a buffer. Right, moving on uh, to a nice buffer uh, explanation now, no calculations required. Um, explain how the carbonic and hydrogen carbonate mixture acts as a buffer. Well, first of all, you've got your, your equation here for how the buffer works. You've got your um, carbonic acid here, and that will dissociate to give you hydrogen carbonate ions and H+. They told you all of that information up here. So, first of all, if you add hydroxide ions to this buffer, they will react with the hydrogen ions to produce water, um, and the equilibrium would move to the right-hand side to replace the H plus ions. If you add acid, for example, if, oh, sorry, yeah, if you add now acid to that, that will react with the hydrogen carbonate ions to produce H2CO3, like so. Um, and the equilibrium would move to the left-hand side, like so. And remove the H-plus ions that you've added.